Sectors that uh, allow them to withstand wind speeds much greater than what we'll see in the next two days. So that, that's one piece of good news. Um, oh, there will news. be motion to the skyscrapers. So, you know, potentially if you're high up, you could experience some, some motion sickness, but there's no structural integrity issues with the building itself. Uh, trees, even in the city and in the suburbs, that uh, can cause potential problems and become missiles for windows. So uh, definitely don't be anywhere near glass at, uh, when the onset of the storm is and, and don't take your chances outside. The challenge, particularly on the transportation side, you know, a lot of our infrastructure, especially in the Northeast, is aging and not very gracefully. And it fails sometimes just by, you know, the day-to-day -day wear and tear. When you put it under extreme pressure for an extended period of time, we're going to see some failure and it's going to take a while to recover blows down the surface winds and they spiral a little bit inward. So you get a turning of the winds with height. That is a source for the rotation. We call that the right front quadrant where that main tornado threat is. Once in a while, this sun back in the right rear quadrant as well. Here's where the tornado threat will develop tonight from Irene. It'll be mainly east parts of North Carolina. I've given on the tornado condition index scale a six on a scale of 10. Their models and what they've done with this, they've been very consistent. And so that's why our confidence is pretty high on this forecast, especially since we're only two days out from it being into the Northeast. So the thing we were pretty certain about, though, is it's going to weaken before it gets up there. However, really, in, in this kind of a situation, it doesn't matter. This is such a big hurricane. It takes so much time to build up big waves and big surf that it is going to cause some surge issues for sure. Now, here's the computer models I was talking about this. Um, still, they're taking it right over, looks like, close to the Outer Banks, real near Nags Head. And if the forecast track keeps it on this way, we should see um, some areas seeing the center itself going over you probably in the next uh, six hours or so. Then we're going to see up here around New York City, uh, possibly the center going over you as well. And then into New England, so it's like uh, Tuesday towards Canada. So our, even our friends in Canada have to watch out for this one. All right, let's go ahead and show you now our satellite picture and seeing the winds along the coast. Um, more from the east, which is typical, especially if you are north of the center, which is right in here. But notice off to the west. I mean, this is very evident, not looking healthy at all. And on radar, too, as Paul was saying, it definitely doesn't look as healthy either. All right, so look at a tornado warning near Elizabeth City, as Paul was talking about. And then there's that radar image. And we'll take a broader view and just looking a little bit ragged at this point. Warm sur sea surface temperatures right now, but it will go over cooler waters. Tornado threat continues all the way up to the northeast. Um, you can get tornadoes with a landfalling system day or night. But typically, once they move inland, the tornado threat is mainly during the day. But with this, we could see this day or night since it's going to track all along the coast. Water vapor imagery. There is an old boundary in here. Okay. Plus, we have another front coming in from the west. Together, we're going to see some problems with heavy rain as well. That trough, by the way, helping to steer our hurricane up towards the northeast of New England. The surge and wave threat big time. And, and you know, we're, we're so concerned about this. I um, mean, four to eight feet around Virginia to Cape Cod, um, eastern North Carolina, six to 11 feet. Because look at this. Look at the wave action it's generating all the way up into, uh, the, it looks like, uh, the mid-Atlantic states, even towards the northeast already. We're seeing reports of over 25-foot waves along the coast. 38-foot waves around the center itself. And, you know, building all of that, it's all getting pushed up towards the north and west, especially north of the low, because it all funnels in this way and flows uh, anticyclonically. And we're looking at, or cyclonically, excuse me, uh, looking at Chesapeake Bay, um, getting some surge on that scenario. Also seeing more of it, even if it tracks a little bit farther west. So either scenario, we're going to see storm surge, and we're going to see a lot of beach erosion, and we're going to see a lot of beach homes, I think, uh, taking a hit from this. Uh, New York City, Long Island Sound, for sure, seeing problems. Fire Island, depending on the track of this. Uh, for, I think for Fire Island, this will be a worse scenario because we're really going to get that flow coming in out of the uh, south, and that's really going to cause some problems. And then we have widespread wind damage as well, mainly because we're going to see trees and power lines possibly come down. Winds, they'll be probably low uh, Cat 1, tropical storm force, but still capable of doing some damage. Kelly?